Hello and welcome back to Life Rewired. I'm Ashley. And I'm Rob. Thank you for joining us today. We have Jocelyn here with us. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, Hi guys. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, so we're very interested. Um, why don't you start by sharing your story with us? Oh, it's a fun story. Um, so I'm 24. I got my traumatic brain injury when I was 21 on January 31st of 21. Um, I was leaving my oldest daughter's third birthday party and, um, it, it's in January, so there was snow, obviously, and then I hit black ice, lost control, and went, like, cross lanes, and when I hit the embankment on the left side, I got T-boned, and when the car hit me, I got thrown, and I had my seatbelt on, but I got thrown, and I knocked myself out. Wow. Yeah. So, quite a unfortunate uh, series of events there. Yeah. So, I found out yeah. how to be grateful it happened. So, it helps me not be sad when I think about it. And how did you come to that point to be grateful for what um, happened? I... I know I was freshly 21. Um, I had a really bad drinking problem. And I know when I didn't have my kids, I was out of control, reckless, drinking heavily, doing promiscuous things. And uh, I just know that it's either my accident or I would have been dead because of my drinking. So that's why I'm grateful it happened because I'm able to be sober and be here for my kids and celebrate every birthday and every holiday with them. Well, that is a great achievement. Congratulations on your sobriety. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So what happened um, from the accident that day? Do you have any recollection of what occurred? Um, I don't remember it for myself but I was told by family or whatever. Um, I was in a coma for two months. Oh, wow. I had a total of seven surgeries and three of those were on my the right side of my head, on my brain. Um, and then I had two on my trach and then two on my feeding tube. Goodness. Yeah. It was a... It felt like a really long five months, but after I woke up and started to like realize what was going on and what happened, I feel like it was like a month and I was like, oh, okay, I'm home. But So you it, required a trach and a G-tube as a result yeah. of the accident? Okay. Yeah. Um, I wasn't breathing on my own, so they put the trach in, and then when they took it out, uh, I had it out for, I think, a week or two, and then there was scar tissue, and I couldn't breathe, and I have asthma, and I would ask for an inhaler, like, freaking out, and um, that didn't help, so then they took me to the emergency room, a different one. Um, They looked in my scar and realized I had 80 to 90% blockage from scar tissue. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So that's why I had two. And um, you don't require the trach or the G-tube currently, I'm assuming? No. um, I got the trach out, uh, I want to say, two or three months before I went home. And I got my feeding tube out the day I went home. So. Good for you. You had a rough road, my friend. Uh, I, I want to say it's rough, but it wasn't rough because if you would have seen my scans or seen like 
what happened or anything like that, you'd be like, only five months? So what type of therapies and treatments did you have to have while you were in the hospital? Um, I actually went to a rehab hospital during my hospital stays um, because I wasn't talking for two months, two or three months. Um, so I had speech, I had physical therapy, and occupational therapy for four hours every day. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's very intense. It is, but I am glad that I still remember when I started talking, my therapist had me sing You're My, Sun my You're My Sunshine. And that's funny because I used to always sing that to my youngest daughter. So it was like, it was just nice the way it worked. That's a great story. Thanks. So that song really has a double meaning for you now. Yeah, I've always loved Sunflowers. And with that song being a lot to me, I like them even more. And now uh, for my TBI tattoo, it's on all my, it's right here. Um, for the t-shirts for my accident, they said Jocelyn's Journey and then had a sunflower on it. So I have a part of a, or half a brain and it's the right side of the brain and half of a sunflower. And under it, it says Jocelyn's Journey. That's cool. Thanks. So what um, issues do you experience currently as being three years out? Um, currently, the only thing that I really have is I have from my brain, everything being messed up. Um, I couldn't feel my the right side of my body for like a year, year and a half, it was numb. Wow. So I still have right side of weakness, but I'm trying to get that back and I'm able to do things. Um, the only thing that I really deal with currently that I've always had was my mental health problems. Because I've been bipolar, I was diagnosed right before my accident with borderline personality disorder. And then I was re-diagnosed with it after. So just navigating life with constant, a roller coaster ride always that never ends. But I'm figuring that out. Yeah, one of the things we've talked about in previous podcasts is how people that have had um, mental health diagnoses, like I have uh, anxiety disorder, how before the accident, um, but since my, um, you know, I'm post-concussion syndrome. Um, since then, you know, it's definitely gotten worse. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like um, your mental health has gotten worse as a result of your injury? Um, so right before my accident, my mental health wasn't good, but I wasn't taking any medicines for it. Mm -hmm. And then about a year, year and a half after, I actually uh, called my brain my brain injury doctor because I was thinking of different ways on how I could kill myself and it scared me. So I actually went to a psych ward twice, um, a year after my injury. But I, I do think that it intensifies any mental health issues you've already had or are currently diagnosed with that's new. I think those thoughts are very, if we're being honest with ourselves, I would mm -hmm. say the highest percentage of people with brain injuries consider that. Yes. And my, the only reason why I wasn't able to go through with the thoughts was I didn't know who or how my family would explain what happened to me to my kids. And my girls were with me in the accident. So they're the reason I fought so hard to come home and so hard to get better and everything like that. They're, they're my purpose for life. I was about to say that they're your driven purpose. Yeah. yeah. 
They really are. That is amazing. Thank you. And the girls were not hurt at all? Um, so my I have two daughters. They were in the accident and my little sister was in the accident with us. Um, Graceland, who is currently five, she was three at the time. Or no, she's currently six. Now she was three at the time. Um, but she had a broken collarbone. Paisley was nine months old when it happened. She's about to be four. Um, she had a concussion and a ruptured spleen. Mm. My little sister was 11 when the accident happened. And she had a broken leg because Paisley's car seat came unanchored or whatever and landed on her leg as the car was hitting us. Oh, so she that happened to them, but I'm just grateful because it hit the front passenger side, and I do not let any kids under 13 sit up front. And I was like, no, get in the back between the girls. And if she would have sat there, she would have died. Wow. Yeah. So everything happens for a reason, and that's why I'm glad it happened. Because we're all still here, we're all doing good, and we're all getting better each day. Yeah, it's good that you had someone. Not, it's not good that you had someone to go through it with it, but you, you had a purpose to go through. Because you could have easily said, "Screw it, I'm giving up." Yeah. But you had those girls to think of, and yeah, that gave you that motivation to keep pushing. Yeah, to, I remember sitting in the psych ward, I was a year out, and I was there for a month for both stays, um, but I remember sitting there like, I cannot let this win. If the accident didn't take me, I'm not going to take myself out, because the three girls deserve way better than this. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And that's why I keep struggling today. <laughs> are there yeah, we any? We all have to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, are, are there any, you know, messages or any advice you would want to give, you know, people out there, you know, going through, you know, a traumatic brain experience that is currently on the road to recovery that. Um. I have a few messages. Okay. Uh, the first one would be, it might be hard right now, but it's not going to stay like this forever. You will get better. Just be patient and graceful with yourself because you will get better for you and you getting better for you is all that really matters. And then I was able to find the girls as the reason you're able to find reasons on why to be grateful what happened because you could have been in an abusive relationship been an alcoholic or a drug addict or just going down a dark path and just be grateful that you were given this opportunity to get better and to get away from whatever your problem was Couldn't have said that better myself. Thanks. It's it's a journey, but it's a journey that you'll be grateful that happened. We're a community, aren't we? Oh, for sure. For yeah, I've, sure. I've preached this since day one. Yeah. The best thing to do is to get into a support group. Support group or... If you can't find one of those, just find a friend or a family member that knew before or after. It doesn't matter how long you've known them, that you can go close bond with and just talk yeah. to about anything without judgment. Because I can't count how many times I've called my sister or my best friend and I'm like, I can't do this anymore like I am struggling and they're able to talk me off the ledge 
Yeah, we need a cheering section. Mm-hmm. We do. I th- yeah, I think everybody does, to be honest with you. Yeah. But our our group of people need it more. Right. We need the encouragement because there's times that we forget to encourage ourselves. Yeah. Like if you get up and the only thing you do is walk to the kitchen and grab water for the day, cool. You achieved staying hydrated. If you achieved checking your mail for once in a week or two weeks, good job. I'm proud of you. Every little step is a big achievement. And I'm so proud of you, everyone that's able to do one thing that they couldn't do the day before. Yeah. Yep. The big key is to try. Yeah. You don't know what you can do if you don't try. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Jocelyn. You're welcome. And I'm always here. I love talking. So oh, I'm yeah. always here. Jocelyn, uh, I'll tell you that people that watch and probably doesn't realize this, but Jocelyn is in a support group that I am in on Tuesday evenings. Okay, great. And occasionally she gets a word in, don't you, Jocelyn? <laughs> oh, occasionally. It's really hard, but occasionally. <laughs> yeah, our support group is nuts. <laughs> I don't uh, know that it's technically a support group, but mm-hmm. we're I there for each other. I don't think it is. It's more of like us <laughs> just hanging out virtually. Yeah. It's like, oh, I I cooked tacos today. Oh, it's awesome. Tacos sound <laughs> really good. And it's just off the wall, but it's fun. Hey, occasionally we do get stuff done. And I'll share this real quick before we go. Um, I don't have a fancy box, but one of our, our um, projects that we were to work on mm-hmm. was to have a coping skills box. So this is a good thing to share with our audience, those of you who have uh, brain injury. Some days we can't motivate ourselves mm-hmm. or we're just kind of down and depressed. And so what we did was we wrote stuff to put in our box of things that we feel make us awesome. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I wrote down was, I'm not awesome, but I didn't put that in my box. <laughs> I did write down, I have a sense of humor, though. <laughs> Oh, I'm a lot. I have a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's one thing I would share with you is uh, to do something like that, to keep yourself encouraged. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, about the box, because I didn't physically do one, but I did it in my head because I was at home. But I always have a bracelet from my accident that says Jocelyn's Journey on it. And I usually always wear one of those, but I took it off because I got a shower for this. But it's what I always wear because it's a reminder of what all I've been through. I can get through whatever else life is throwing yeah. at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's in my yeah. Thank you so it. much again, and welcome. Thank Ashley. You for thank me. you. F- You're welcome. Ashley, thank you for being the host today. I wanted to turn the reins over to Ashley so um, she could have some more talking time because there's sometimes I think I do too much talking. It's a TBI <laughs> thing, I swear. <laughs> I'd talk to a wall if it talked back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that wonderful note, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our video. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Good night.